What you are seeing right here is my own Minecraft 1.20.5 server. And as you can see, if I go to the server console and I kick myself out, it will immediately kick me from the server because this is in real time. This is an actual server. And I'm going to teach you how to make this 1.20.5 Minecraft server in this video. Let's get started. Step number one to create a Minecraft server for Minecraft 1.20.5 is to click the second link in the description, which is going to bring you to a written guide on how to make a Minecraft server. Now, the great thing about this guide is that it's always up to date. By the way, guys, keep in mind that this server that we're about to create is a locally hosted server, meaning that you will need to port forward your IP address for your friends to join, which means that you might put yourself at risk because if people People were to get a hand of your IP address, strangers could even figure out exactly where you live using your IP address. So you will only want to share your IP address and the server specifically with your close friends and people that you trust. And that is why Apex Hosting is always a great option because with Apex Hosting, you could create a server, either a Java or a Bedrock server that is open 24 seven, a server that is hosted completely online. So you don't have to expose your IP address and people won't be able to attack you. This server will be set up in less than five minutes. You could even install mod packs in the server with just a click of a button. There's more than 200 mod packs with just a click of one button. Now, besides the 25% off that you get on your first server, if you use the first link below, Apex Hosting has locations all over the world, meaning that you won't have to worry about lagging when you set up this server. You can set up a server in Australia, Turkey, Japan, wherever you are located, you could create a server and don't worry about having a bad connection. Use the first link below for 25% off and let's get back into the tutorial. And now we are ready to create the server. Go ahead and click on that second link, scroll down and click where it says download server jar. That'll bring you over here to the Minecraft official page where we're going to click on this green line right here that says Minecraft server. Go ahead and click on that and that'll begin the download for the server jar file. Go ahead and drag and drop that server jar file to your desktop. You can put it anywhere really, but we're gonna put it on our desktop right now for easy of use. Let's go ahead and put it in here. And now I want you to go ahead and rename this file to just server.jar. Your file might be already named server.jar. Mine had a one in there because obviously I always try my videos before I make a video on it, or I always try the tutorials before I make a video on it. Anyways, once we have the server.jar file, go ahead and create a new folder and you can name this folder whatever you want. Usually you wanna name it something related to your server so you know this is your server. Server. So I'm going to go ahead and name it server 1.20.5 and then go ahead and drag and drop that file that we just downloaded into our new folder. Go ahead and drag and drop it into there and go ahead and open this folder app. Now, a very important step before we keep going with this guide is to head back to the second link in the description and download Java 21. The reason being is because the new update of Minecraft 1.20.5 when making a new server will require you to have at least Java 21 on your computer. Before you could do it with just Java 17, but now we need to install Java 21. So head back to that second link and scroll down until you see the requirements. And then where it says Java 21, go ahead and click on it. That'll bring you over here where you're going to make sure you select JDK 21. Go ahead and select JDK 21, select Windows, and then click on the X64 installer right in the middle. And that'll begin the download for the installer of Java 21. And now that we have the installer for Java 21, go ahead and drag and drop it into your desktop. And with the Java installer in your desktop, we now have everything to start. The first thing that we're going to do is get rid of any older instance of Java. How do you do that? Head over to the search bar and type out of remove programs. Open that up in here, type Java where it says search apps and then select Java 17 or any older version of Java that you have and click on install and then uninstall this app and then just wait for the app to delete. And once we have Java gone, and by the way, maybe when you came over here, you didn't have any Java. And if you didn't have any Java, that's fine. Then you could skip the part of deleting it. And we're gonna go ahead and start installing it right away. To install Java 21, all you have to do is double click it. Now, when you double click on Java, that might prompt you with the administrator sign, allow it to run and then click next. Click next and just wait for Java to install. It's very simple. We also have guides in our website on how to install Java, but it's super, super simple. Once you install Java, go ahead and click on close. And then you could go ahead and even delete the installer because we don't need it anymore. Let's head back to our folder with the server 1.20.5 where we have our server file. Now that we have the server.jar file in here, all we have to do is double click on it and it will start extracting files. As you can see, it's now extracting files. This is something that won't happen if you don't have Java 21. And the reason I say that is because I tried it before and it didn't work, okay? So now that we have every file in here. This will stop extracting files once we see the ULA.txt. In order to fix that, just go ahead and double click the ULA.txt file and where it says false, change it to true. So just type true in there. There we go. Click file, click save, and then go ahead and close this file. And now you could double click on the server.jar file once again, finishing the extraction of files, and then it will launch a server in a little server console that you will see in here. 
and then we'll take it from there. Now, as you can see, it's asking me if I want to allow Java to access the public network. Of course, I want that to happen because I want people to join my server later on. However, if you don't want to take the risk, just use the first link in the description and create a server with Apex Hosting. As you can see, we now have a little server console in here. This is a kind of a simple and a straightforward to use server console. We could stop our server by typing a stop in here. And that's actually what we're going to do next because we're going to have to join our own server and we're going to have to set up things before we play right before we open the server so you just go ahead and type a stop that is the way you're going to close the server most of the time so you just go ahead and type a stop and then press enter and that will stop your server okay so now that we have this folder with all these files in here let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger now we're going to look for a file called servers that property and that file is right here and all we have to do now is right click and open it with the notepad you could either use notepad or notepad plus plus if you have notepad plus plus it's free to use free to download and it's kind of useful you know when it comes to these type of things anyways once we open the server properties we'll see all this information in here we have the difficulty of our server we have the server ip address the server port all of that but in here we're just looking for a specific line which is the server ip so this line in here it's line 51 for me so just look for server ip and in here we're going to add our local ipv4 address and how do you get your local ipv4 address well that's super simple just go ahead and click where it says search and then type command prompt go ahead and launch your command prompt go ahead and type ip config just like so, and then press enter. That is going to give you a lot of information in here, but you are just looking for a line called IPv4 address, which is this line in here, as you can see, and we only care about the numbers at the end. So just go ahead and select those numbers, right? Just drag your mouse across them and then control C to copy those numbers. And now you could even close out of the command prompt Head over to the server IP line and then control V to paste that server IP address. That's all you need as of now. And that is the number that we're going to use to join our server. So just remember that number or just control C and copy it again. And now save this file and you could go ahead and close out of this file that we opened the server properties. Now to launch our server, we could either double click and launch our server and that will open the server console that we had before and we could join our server using that IP address. But I also want to show you how to change the RAM amount of your server. Let's say that you want to change the RAM amount of your server. How do you do that? In order for you to change the RAM amount of your server, all you have to do is right click, click new, click text document, go ahead and launch that text document app. And once the text document opens, we're going to copy and paste this line of text that you could find either on the minecraft.net website where we downloaded the server file from or in the description of this video as well as in the first pinned comment of the video. Now we're going to select the whole line and we're going to copy it. However, in the description of this video, you're going to see that you're going to have multiple lines. That is because I'm going to offer you different options. For example, I'm going to give you the two gigabyte, the four gigabyte, the eight gigabyte option, and you're going to choose which one you want. The amount of gigabytes of RAM that we're going to select needs to depend on how much RAM we have available on our computer. For example, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM available, meaning that giving this server a gigabyte of ram means nothing to me i could even give this server 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of ram if i wanted but if you only have let's say 16 gigabytes of ram maybe you want to give your server 4 gigabytes and if you give it 8 gigabytes you might be pushing it a little bit if you have 8 gigs of ram maybe you want to give the server 2 or 4 gigabytes you don't want to push it that much because you still need resources on your computer to be able to run the game after that unless you only want to open the server and you don't want to join it yourself which is why i always recommend that you just use apex hosting instead but anyways we're going to change the ram amount in here from 1024 megabytes to let's say 8 gigabytes so just select everything here just select 1024 and then the m and just type a g and that is 8 gigabytes that we're going to the server are you also going to select the 1024 m on the xms line and you're going to change it to one gig you could also change this number here if you want to give it 16 gigabytes four gigabytes i'm just going to give it eight but you could always change it to whatever you want. Now, something else that we're going to do in this text document is make sure that this line in here, the Minecraft server 1.20.5.jar, matches our server name. And as you can see, our server name is just server.jar. So we're going to have to change this part in here to match our server.jar file. And as you can see now, we have server.jar file in there. And now with all these changes that we did, we're going to click on file and we're going to click on save as. Just make sure that your name matches your server file and that you have the amount of RAM that you need for your server to run properly. Like I said, this will depend on your computer and how much RAM that you have. Click on file, click on save as, and then here we're going to type run that bat as the name for the file and also we're going to change the save as type to all files so change it from text document to all files 
name it run.bat and then click on save and then you will close out from here and now you will have a run.bat file which will run your server on eight gigabytes of ram or whatever gigabytes amount you gave your server to run with go ahead and double click on that file to open your server and as you can see the server will begin running just give it a couple of seconds in here because it will take some time for the server to run and as you can see it's now creating everything that it needs it's loading the server and it's asking me again if i want this server to run publicly i'm gonna click allow so yeah so later on my friends could join and i could join myself and there we go the server has started and now we are ready to join how do you join your server well remember the ipv4 address that we copied earlier that's the one we're going to use you could always find it here in your server's property so if you open your server properties you could always find it here your local ipv4 address just copy it and now just launch minecraft 1.20.5 which is what i'm about to do make sure you have your server open in the background and just launch minecraft 1.20.5 now with minecraft open i'm actually splitting my screen so everything is easier to follow with minecraft open to join your own server you're just gonna click on multiplayer you're gonna click proceed and in here we're going to click allow so we could actually join public servers right we're gonna click allow and then we're going to click add server or direct connection however you want to do it i'm gonna click add server on the server name you're gonna name this whatever you want so i'm gonna name it i don't know local server and then on the server address you're going to paste that ipv4 address that we copied earlier and then you're gonna click on done and that is going to add your local server for you to join you could also click on direct connection and you could type local host these little dots in here 25 56 5 and then you'll be able to join your own server anyways with our local server in there just click on play and as you can see as soon as you join your world you will see your name appear here on your server console which is pretty useful because for example right now we could head over to the console and type op and then it's cuba and we'll give ourselves administrator permission as you can see on the game we just gave ourselves op and if you're wondering why my game looks so good that is because i'm using shaders and yes it is minecraft 1.20.5 and i already posted a video on this channel on how to use shaders on this version of minecraft anyways we have joined our server how do we have our friends join our server now because well i don't want to play by myself to have your friends join your server you will need to port forward your server now port forwarding is a little bit different than what we did it's not necessarily super hard, but it requires you to access your router menu and changing a couple settings around there. And that is we have a dedicated video on how to port forward. That video should be coming up on the screen right now. And that is the video that I want you to go watch next for you to have your friends join. Because obviously you want to play Minecraft with friends. It's just way better to play it with friends. So yeah, go watch that video next to port forward your server and have your friends join in no time and start enjoying the Minecraft experience together. Anyways, I hope you were able to create a server. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.